kindly follow me on my Facebook page and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you! In this video for Grade 8 Mathematics, we will talk about the converse, inverse, contrapositive, and biconditional statements. So last time sa ating nakaraang video tutorial, pinag-usapan natin ang conditional statement wherein ang P ang nagre-represent sa hypothesis and Q is for the conclusion. So kapag meron tayong conditional statement or if-then statement, we will have if P, then Q. So ngayon, pag-uusapan natin ng converse, inverse, contrapositive, at by conditional. So kung sa con uh, conditional statement, meron tayong if P, then Q, or ganitong symbol. Dito naman sa converse, pagpapalitin natin ng position ng conclusion at ng hypothesis. So magiging if Q, then P. Sa inverse naman, inverse is kabaliktaran ng positive. So, kung ang conditional statement ay positive statement, ang inverse naman ay negative statement, so paano nga ba magiging negative yung statement? Lalagyan lang natin ng salitang not or no. So, sa inverse, if not P, then Q. Kapag naman contrapositive, kabaliktaran naman ang inverse, so if not Q, then not P. Kapag naman biconditional, gagamit tayo ng words na if and only if. So, P if and only if Q. Gamitin na natin isa-isa or let us discuss this given statement one by one. Okay, i-recall muna natin ang conditional statement. Kapag sinabing conditional statement, both the hypothesis and the conclusion are positive. So, ito yung nagre-represent sa conditional statement. Next is the converse statement. It formed when the hypothesis and conclusion of a conditional statement are switched. So, magpapalit ang posisyon ng hypothesis and conclusion. Next naman ay yung inverse statement. So, kapag sinabing inverse statement, both the hypothesis and conclusion are negative. So, ganito yung ginagamit nating symbol when we are using the inverse statement. So, that will become negative P. Then, negative Q. And then, ang kabaliktara naman ng inverse statement ay yung contrapositive statement. It is formed when the hypothesis and conclusion of an inverse statement are switched. So, negative Q, then negative P. And the last is the biconditional statement, combination of a conditional statement and its converse, written in the form if and only if. So, ito naman yung magiging symbol ng biconditional statement. So, let's now have the example. We have the given statement. The triangle is equilateral and equiangular. So, gamitin natin ito sa conditional statement or may ganitong format. If P, then Q. Hahatiin natin sa dalawa ang ating given statement. And kung mapapansin nyo, gumamit ng salitang end. So, gamitin natin yung dalawang parts ng statement na ito. So, ito ay magiging if the triangle is equilateral, then it is equiangular. So, gumamit tayo ng noun na triangle. Ito yung ating hypothesis. And yung word naman, ay yung sentence naman na it is equiangular, ito naman yung ating conclusion. So, since ang natira na lang dito after ng salitang end ay equiangular, so, para makabuo tayo ng conclusion, magdadagdag lang tayo ng pronoun ng ating given noun. So, since isang bagay ang triangle, so gumamit tayo ng pronoun na it. And next naman is yung converse statement or if Q, then P. So, pagpapalitin lang natin yung posisyon ng hypothesis at ng conclusion. And then, palagi pong nasa unahan or nasa unang part ng sentence or ng statement ang noun. So, ang converse statement natin ay magiging, if the triangle is equiangular, then it is equilateral. So, nagpalit lang yung posisyon ng conclusion at ng hypothesis. Next is, inverse statement or negative P, then negative Q. So, dito gagawin lang natin negative or inverse ng conditional. So, maglalagay lang tayo ng word na not or no. So, this will become, if the triangle is not 
equilateral, then it is not equiangular. Next naman is contrapositive statement or if negative Q, then negative T. So, kabalik tara naman ito ng inverse statement. So, magiging if the triangle is not equiangular, then it is not equilateral. And the last is the biconditional statement. So, yung biconditional statement, yung ating given statement ay lalagyan lang natin ng words na if and only if. So, ang ating biconditional statement ay magiging the triangle is equilateral if and only if it is equiangular. So, yung, palit, uh, yung word na end, pinalitan natin ng if and only if. And then, may, meron din siyang conclusion na it is equiangular katulad ng nasa condition ng statement. Another example, a polygon has exactly four sides and it is a quadrilateral. So, dito sa ating given statement, kung mapapansin nyo, meron ulit tayong salitang end. So, ibig sabihin, hinati ng, o pinagsama ng word na end ang dalawang phrase. So, meron tayong unang phrase and then pangalawang phrase. So, let us now proceed on the conditional statement. So, conditional statement, dadagdagan lang natin ng word na if, then. Kaya magiging, if a polygon has exactly four sides, then it is a quadrilateral. Next, so ito yung ating hypothesis and yung ating conclusion. Next is the converse statement or if Q, then P. Again, pagpapalitin lang natin yung posisyon ng conclusion at ng hypothesis. Kaya magiging, if a polygon is a quadrilateral, then it has exactly four sides. Kung mapapansin nyo palagi pong yung salitang polygon ay nasa unang phrase. So, ibig sabihin palagi pong nauuna ang noun kesa doon sa kanyang pronoun na nasa pangalawang part ng statement. Next is the inverse statement or if negative P, then negative Q. Again, uh, negative statement ng conditional statement ang ating inverse. So, magiging if a polygon has no exactly four sides, then it is not a quadrilateral. So, dito sa ating conditional statement, nagdagdag lang tayo ng word na no. Ibig sabihin, has no. So, hindi exactly or hindi exact ang four sides. Then, it is not a quadrilateral. Next is contrapositive statement or if negative Q, then negative P. Again, ito ay kabaliktaran lang ng inverse statement. So, magiging if a polygon is not a quadrilateral, then it has no exactly four sides. And the last is the biconditional statement. Again, magdadagdag lang tayo ng words na if and only if doon sa ating given statement. So, magiging a polygon has exactly four sides if and only if it is a quadrilateral. Again, yung salitang end ng ating statement ay pinalitan lang natin ng if and only if. Third example, two line segments of equal length are congruent. So dito, kung mapapansin nyo, wala tayong word na end. Pero may binanggit dyan na equal length at congruent. So gagawin natin, na conditional statement, ang given statement na ito using the words congruent and equal length. So, para sa ating conditional statement or if P then Q, we will use the subject or two-line segments. So, this will become if two-line segments are equal in length, then they are congruent. So, ang ating hypothesis, two, lines, seg uh, two line segments are equal in length. At ang atin namang conclusion ay, they are congruent. So, dito, yung equal length ay ginawa nating or equal in length. Ibig sabihin, equal ang haba ng dalawang line segments. Next is the converse statement. Pagpapalitin ang posisyon ng conclusion at, ha, uh, at ng hypothesis. So, magiging, if two, seg, uh, if two line segments are congruent, then they have equal length. Next is inverse statement, negative. So, magiging if two line segments are not equal in length, then they are not congruent. Next is contrapositive statement. Again, kabaliktaran siya ng inverse. So, magiging if two line segments are not congruent, 
then they have no equal legs. And the last is the biconditional statement. Dadagdagan lang natin ng words na if and only if yung ating given statement. So, magiging two line segments or equal in length if and only if they are congruent. Last example, an acute angle measures less than 90 degrees. So, ito, kung mapapansin nyo, wala ulit yung word na end. So, hindi natin makikita kung saan natin agad hahatiin sa dalawa ang statement. So, sabi dyan, an acute angle measures less than 90 degrees. So, meron na tayong given na kind ng angle, which is acute angle. So, para mahati natin to sa dalawa, iisipin natin sa ang grupo ba na bibilang yung acute angle. So, ang conditional statement natin ay pwedeng maging if an angle is an acute angle, then it measures less than 90 degrees. So, dito, kung mapapansin nyo, nagdagdag tayo ng salitang angle dahil doong grupo o sa grupo na angle na bibilang ang acute angle. So, dito, nagdagdag tayo ng subject na angle. So, again, an angle is an acute angle. Iyon yung ating hypothesis. At ang conclusion naman ay, it measures less than 90 degrees. So, meron na tayong conditional statement. Mas madali na para sa atin ang mahanap ang inverse statement hanggang sa biconditional statement. So, simulan natin or sundan natin ng converse statement. Again, kabaliktaran lang ng conclusion at ng hypothesis. So, magiging if an angle measures less than 90 degrees, then it is an acute angle. Next is inverse statement, negative. So, magiging if an angle is not an acute angle, then it does not measure less than 90 degrees. Next is contrapositive statement, kabaliktaran naman ng inverse. So, magiging if an angle does not measure less than 90 degrees, then it is not an acute angle. And the last is biconditional statement, dadagdagan lang natin ng words na if and only if. So, an angle is an acute angle, ito po yun, if and only if it measures less than 90 degrees. So, kung mapapansin nyo yung ating conditional statement ay inalis natin yung word na if at then, pinalitan natin ng if and only if. Kaya naging an angle is an acute angle if and only if it measures less than 90 degrees. So, let us now summarize what we have learned about the given statements or different kind of statements. So, we have this given conditional statement, if P, then Q na kung saan ang P, iyon yung ating hypothesis, at ang Q naman, iyon yung conclusion. Converse, if Q, then P. Kabaliktaran lang siya ng conditional. And then, inverse naman is the negative statement, na kung saan, kung ang conditional statement ay positive statement, ang inverse naman ay negative statement, so magdadagdag lang kayo ng words na not or no. So, if not P, then not Q. Contrapositive naman ay kabaliktaran ng inverse. So, pagpapalitin natin ang posisyon ng Q at ng P. And then, the last is the biconditional statement. Magdadagdag tayo ng words na if and only if. Aalitin, aalisin natin, sorry. Aalisin natin yung words na if, then. Kaya magiging P, if and only if, Q. Sana ay may natutunan kayo tungkol sa iba-ibang uri ng statements. Thank you for watching. If you have questions or suggestions, feel free to comment below. Enjoy learning mathematics. God bless us all!